Welcome to the Panacea model. This unique model was crafted from decades of personal and professional experience to provide powerful shortcuts to bring proven solutions forward. The seven strategies provided in the Panacea acronym is a complete system guiding others towards solutions only discovered internally by learning how to access our advanced guidance system since there are no solutions outside of us. We will cover advanced topics that we outline in our introductory series more in depth, including our Panacea model, providing valuable shortcut strategies that you can implement anytime, anywhere for personal empowerment, self-mastery, and permanent life solutions. Be sure to refer to your guidebooks to get the most out of your experience. To begin, we start out discussing the DNA connection. As with any therapy, and if a therapist wants to address the core level, we need to first consider how we are genetically wired and understand that DNA connection of our own genetic and psychological behavioral traits. Each of us realize that we are in part a product of our parents, yet we may not be aware that the genes we inherit will dictate our life's choices, behaviors, actions, including the outcomes of our successes and our failures due to the beliefs that we also inherit. The failures and subconscious patterns are generally sabotaging behaviors derived from our DNA. Most practitioners don't address the, this core level to overcome their default programming to advance in their life, which is permanent. If we are to not only practice our own medicine, but to master it, we must understand the concept of our biological behavior first and foremost. So much of the stress that we encounter is also genetically transferred. In fact, many patterns in your life can be traced to genetic traumas, hardships and unresolved conflicts that are stored in your DNA from your ancestors. Science has proven that DNA is not only the physical characteristics of your lineage, but also the accumulation of emotional traumas from earlier generations that led to the subconscious beliefs and current conscious reality genetically inherited. Brain science calls this field of study and treatment epigenetics. Epigenetics is a science that views our development as the result of an ongoing interchange between hereditary and environmental factors. According to molecular bio biologists, your genes are shaped in part by your ancestors' life experiences and demonstrates that traits and behaviors acquired in one generation can be passed on to subsequent generations. So what have you learned from past or present environments? What have you learned from your genetic or default patterns? And what kind of patterns and behavioral patterns have you absorbed from both the nature nurture or diastasis model? What were your freedoms and what were your limitations? Findings suggest that the majority of our subconscious blocks are genetic. The brain inherits unfinished business transferred from our ascendants. And Dr. Candice Pert explains that traumatic experiences in particular frequently result in strong emotional reactions that are stored within the brain's neural pathways and the cells of the body, locking an individual to some extent within the same emotional experience. So like feeling abandoned by a parent at youth, one may have subconsciously conditioned that pattern throughout their lifetime until it is reprogrammed. So because creation of peptides within the cell utilizes the DNA, a proclivity towards specific peptides may be transferred genetically, which explains genetic patterns of both disease and demeanor. So dispositions that are both emotional and physical are both transferred genetically. And here's an example of some epigenetics at work. A young mother conceived a child before marriage and wasn't psychologically ready to be a mother, so her fear was that she wouldn't be a good enough mother as she had not yet fulfilled her own dreams, and her partner or spouse wasn't emotionally supportive. Then her daughter repeated the same cycle and conceived her first child premaritally and experienced the same fear of not feeling good enough. She too married for the sake of the child, sacrificing her own dreams and happiness, then later divorced because of these emotional complexities from epigenetic patterns. Then this first child also conceived her child, and then her partner passed away, leaving this young mother in the fear of not feeling ready to raise the child on her own. So the fear was even reinforced that she wouldn't yet be ready to be a good enough mother. 
She faced many tragedies and hardships that led her to address her healing and co-work. This single mother conceived a son and is now working on being the chain breaker of this inherent cycle. This acronym P may very well be associated with an inherited pattern or belief. It's important to work primarily with the deepest core beliefs or inherited patterns to address and eliminate the majority of our life's problems. By doing so, many of our issues will dissolve on their own accord because oftentimes they are related and more than likely merely a symptom and a result of our core inherited beliefs. There are too many inadvertent parenting mistakes, but the price is too high. Whether the parent is too overproductive and won't let the child do anything, sending the implicit message that they can't do anything right on their own, can lead a child fearing making their own decisions and being overtly passive, or a child always being compared to more accomplished children, may lead to a child developing an inferiority complex or self-criticism. Although parents may obviously mean well and love their child, the harm done can last a lifetime until the emotional impression and psychological imprint is addressed and therefore transformed. Unmet needs evolve as a result of the child seeking the affection, comfort, or protection of the parent during difficult times and perceived those needs as being unmet in the attempt. For example, a child may get hurt and run to a parent for emotional support to feel comforted and protected. This act helps a child to feel safe and worthy of the parent's love. If the child feels his or her emotional needs were dismissed or overlooked at that time, she or he may not have effectively learned how to self-regulate emotions, but develop maladaptive coping responses as a result of the ego's proclivity toward protective mechanism. Regardless of whether the parent did his or her best to adequately meet the child's needs, these fallible and infallible methods in which a parent shows their love will ultimately shape their child's behavior and life. Core issues may be associated with a perceived unmet psychological need or an early adverse childhood experience or memory, such as trauma or being a witness of trauma. For instance, you may have witnessed a family or loved one who was repeatedly abused and consequently formed a new belief as a result of it. You may have told yourself that relationships are unsafe or that you cannot trust anyone. These beliefs may have served for a time as a way to protect yourself from further harm. However, there comes a time when our beliefs limit us and no longer serve us because the primitive brain is meant to keep us safe and unharmed, which may also prevent us from experiencing further opportunities and success. They may have prevented us from developing close bonds or deeper intimate relationships with others. So can you recall any memories in which your emotional or physical needs appear to be unmet? Moreover, these beliefs may have prevented us from entering into any partnership in business or marriage, or from taking healthy risks that would enable us to thrive or get ahead in life. These beliefs begin to restrict, restrict us from the life we truly desire until the desire to have these things becomes greater than the sacrifice of using protection mechanisms and poor coping behaviors that become barriers to having what we really want is when we can have the mental breakthrough that will enable us to let go of the belief we once held sacred, believing they were causing our life to feel more safe and secure. Inherited beliefs and unmet childhood needs are responsible for shaping many of our behaviors and core beliefs because they were both modeled to us and transferred genetically. For this reason, and especially for those that were raised by their parents, Inherited dispositions can be where we struggle with the most stubborn and difficult psychological patterns and physical health challenges in our attempt to overcome them. So look at any obstinate behaviors you may have and see if it is producing favorable results. This is a peek into our own limiting beliefs and self-defeating behaviors so we can successfully improve them. We all realize that our beliefs are a result of a lot of our psychological and subconscious programming. But many of us don't realize these go deeper into our genetic programming. In this introduction course to genetic recoding, by addressing subconscious blocks, we explored ways to deconflict and address the negative effects of maladaptive responses resulting from these core inherited beliefs or perceived unmet needs and generational family patterns. Now, 
take mental inventory and notice what people or events activate certain emotional triggers. These emotional reactions are from distorted beliefs and epigenetic programming that serve as internal mirrors into our blind spots, unresolved emotions, and these unmet needs, which is necessary to uncover in order to restore wholeness and emotional integration. While many of us need to come to terms with the fact that our parents were not our deity and are imperfect humans, this exercise is not intended to place blame or negativity on any of your caretakers. It is, however, intended to provide valuable insight into our beliefs and behaviors exhibited through this powerful mirror technique. Our core beliefs are rooted in our biology as well as early childhood experiences related to our parents. With age regression, we can trace a pattern drawing from our current experience and back to our early childhood, to our birth, then finally generational hardships. This isn't intended to open old wounds. However, it is designed to process unresolved trapped emotions or trauma that is still operating throughout subconscious programming because our past shapes who we are today and our present reality. If you were raised by more than one caretaker or not raised by logical parents, to complete this exercise, you will need to write any unmet physical or psychological needs from both your biological parents and other caretakers in this section. In other words, perhaps their physical or emotional absence may be the case to the perceived unmet need or void. We understand that it's not our caretaker's responsibility to meet all of our emotional unmet needs. However, we will cover in more depth techniques for you to gain more insight and understanding around the subconscious programming. Common and negative emotions and beliefs resulting from unmet childhood needs are often associated with issues related to our beliefs of unworthiness. And I'm going to list the following. See which ones may apply. Feelings of poor self-worth or lacking emotional security. Feeling inadequate, not enough, or incompetent. Feeling powerless or like a victim. Controlled by fear, overwhelm, anxiety, fear, suppressed emotions, conditional love, judgment, rejected, rigid or conflicting beliefs, neglected or abandoned, emotionally disconnected, locked compassion, chronic depression or worry or the perception of being unacknowledged, invalidated, or unvalued. Each of these feelings will most likely create cognitive distortions at a time of a specific event and self-defeating patterns, maybe at a moment when you felt unloved, until they are healed. And the purpose of this panacea system is to do just that. So go ahead and Describe some of your unmet psycholo psychological needs from your biological parents or caretakers. Describe some of your unmet psychological needs from other caretakers or key players that shaped your experience. For example, grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, neighbors, school teachers, and authority figures. And then describe some of your unmet needs in your current relationship with a spouse or a partner or a key player and shapeshifter in your life. Now identify and list any similarities regarding unmet needs, which are the perceived voids from your biological parents or these caretakers, and in your current relationships with either a spouse or partner, recognizing that they have become a key player as they have shaped you into the person you're meant to be, learning how to develop a specific strength from a valuable lesson and into the individual that you are today.